Hi, I'm Svetlana Bedareva, co-curator and co-organizer of the exhibition at the Frontline Ukrainian Art 2013-2019. And I'm very glad to welcome you to the virtual tour around the exhibition that currently takes place at the Seredok Ukrainian Cultural and Educational Center in Winnipeg. Welcome everybody. My name is Hanna Deikon. I'm a co-curator and co-organizer of the project at the Frontline Ukrainian Art 2013-2019. Welcome to our video guide. At the front line, Ukrainian art 2013-2019 focuses on the last six years of turbulence uh, in Ukraine, all the historical events that uh, the Ukrainian society experienced and uh, the reflections of the artist on, on, on uh, cultural, uh, social and political changes brought by the events of Maidan of 2013-2014 and of uh, the war with Russia that is currently ongoing. This project uh, was first presented in Mexico. In uh, September 2019, we opened uh, the exhibition at uh, the National Museum of World Cultures in Mexico City. And this uh, exhibition lasted there for five months. And we had uh, parallel projects uh, such as uh, screenings of Ukrainian documentaries uh, at the National Cineteca in Mexico City and four conferences dedicated to Ukraine with uh, participation of uh, Ukrainian, Mexican, uh, British and uh, other international researchers uh, at the Museum of Memory and Tolerance, also in Mexico City. Now we are very happy to present this uh, exhibition in Canada. Uh, we think that this is a very interesting possibility to uh, present these works and discuss these works in a different context and with uh, audience that often has uh, a lot of knowledge about uh, current events in Ukraine and about uh, the current kind of social transformation that is, uh, are, are ongoing in the country. Our story begins uh, at the end of November 2013 when Viktor Yanukovych, Ukrainian president, suspended negotiations with the uh, European Union instead to negotiate with Russia. Uh, due to the violence and brutality of military and rigidity of the government, the peaceful protests in Ukraine uh, at Maidan, uh, Independence Square of Kiev, uh, took more violent and anti-governmental um, uh, turn. By February 2014, uh, in three months, uh, more than 100 uh, protesters were killed. Uh, the protests led to change in the government when Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych uh, fled to um, Russia and during this power vacuum in Ukrainian government the annexation of Crimea and the military Russian invasion in the eastern part of Ukraine took place. The outbreak break of violence uh, trapped uh, thousands of Ukrainians in a war that continues until today. Uh, more than 13,000 people have died and millions are displaced. The artists uh, from the beginning of the protests until today uh, have been at the center of event, um, trying to capture, conceptualize, reflect um, and criticize the conditions of violence in their work. The first section of the exhibition is called Stories. Uh, it is dedicated to individual stories of people who uh, experienced the turbulences of the past six years and uh, also to institutional stories. Uh, in this section we focus on the experience of uh, the revolution of Maidan and its impact on, uh, on the cultural situation in Ukraine and uh, personal biographies. And also uh, we speak about the experience of displacement that is lived by a big part of Ukrainian society due to the ongoing war with Russia in the east of the country. The first work in the exhibition is called Iron Arch. This is a video by Estonian artist Christina Norman uh, that she presented uh, during uh, 2015 Manifesto Biennale in St. Petersburg. Uh, Christina Norman invited uh, Ukrainian artist Aleftina Kahidze to uh, give an imaginary guided tour around Palace Square in St. Petersburg in front of Hermitage Museum pretending that this square is actually the independent square in Kiev, the Maidan Square, where all the events of 2013-2014, Ukrainian Maidan uh, protests, took place. Uh, Kahiza narrates 
her uh, experience. She narrates the events that she witnessed in the in the Maidan, and she uses uh, for this the site of uh, of the palace square, using also a kind of visual similarities that these two squares can can encounter, such as uh, the column uh, in the center of the square, some kind of similarities in the structure. Uh, in this way. Uh, making the viewer feel as if they're present in the site of, of, of the events. And uh, this project rethinks the idea of uh, exporting social protest in the uh, post-socialist space, uh, but it also makes uh, to think uh, kind of more profoundly in the context of, uh, of the ongoing war with Russia. Of course, this uh, idea of uh, exporting the revolution to, to St. Petersburg, even virtually, uh, provoked big opposition from the side of, uh, of Hermitage. And, uh, for example, the parallel work that uh, Christina Norman presented, a green uh, iron scaffolding representing the uh, under-constructed uh, Christmas tree, that was the symbol of Maidan protest because it, there was a real under-constructed Christmas tree in the Maidan Square. Uh, this this construction by Christina Norman in the Palace Square uh, was removed just a few days after it was uh, it was presented in the framework of uh, Manifesto BNL. Uh, so this video is uh, the second remaining part of the of the of the of the of the. It was the Listelle. Студенты протестовали. В этот день спали, пели, возле костра грелись. В принципе, вполне возможно, собирались домой. Но произошло насилие. На следующий день елку и стали наряжать совсем по-другому. Не ветками еловыми, а флагами и лозунгами. А ветки еловые пошли в баррикады. Когда мы ехали с медикаментами, чтобы отнести тем, кто в них нуждались, мы оказались на платформе перед выходом из метро, и там нам встретился мужик, который вот так вот ходил, просто как сумасшедший, говорил, не выходите из метро, не выходите из метро, там берку стреляет. Но мы вышли, ну, мы вышли, да, мы вышли, и скажу так, что все, что здесь... Можно было видеть на площади, все было залито э, ну, газом, то есть он, его было видно. Ну и взрывы от гранат, дым от них. Ну что, я вам марку покажу, посвященную дружбе двум народам. Или дружбе между двумя народами, вот так можно сказать. Вот она, она железная. Между народом Украины и России, вот. Арка. И, кстати, все, что здесь происходило, оно никаким образом туда не доходило. Ну вот. Another work that focuses on the experience of Maidan events is uh, the installation, the so-called, by Ukrainian artist Lada Nakonechne. In this installation, the artist presented uh, the research that she did during the events of uh, winter 2013, uh, spring 2014. Uh, when she collected the words that uh, pro-Ukrainian and pro-Russian media used in order to label the opposite uh, ideological position. Uh, such words as terrorists, uh, neo-Nazi, uh, uh, rebels, uh, and, and, and so on. And uh, she, uh, she stamped this work, uh, these words that were used to label kind of ideological enemy on uh, paper and she wrapped uh, the stones with this paper uh, in order to create some kind of metaphorical stones that the opposite sides throw at each other constantly and uh, this uh, work even though it's related to the events of 2013 actually is it can work as a more general comment on the uh, ongoing situation in ukraine till uh, till present moment uh, where we see this kind of uh, strong opposition created by means of mass media. Plan of escape uh, from the Donetsk region, Roman meaning. Uh, this uh, graphic work in a big format uh, gives us a context of the Donetsk region 
region which is located in eastern Ukraine and where uh, mil the military conflict with Russia is taking place since 2014 until today. Uh, this region is characterized by heavy industry and mining, uh, which for local population is not only work or industry, but also a way of life. The artist who was born there in a miner family uh, locates figure of miner in the center of his work, uh, searching for kind of an archetype or ontological image of it. He works, uh, artist works in a uh, self-invented genre, transmonumentalism. It's a plastic language which combines uh, decorative elements of local folklore and also uh, of um, aesthetics of Orthodox Church, playing uh, and creating new senses and symbols. As the second part of the section of stories, we would like to speak about the experience of displacement lived by a big part of Ukrainian society in, uh, since the beginning of a war with Russia in the east of the country. And uh, here we would like to speak about a very interesting case of uh, the uh, Cultural Center Izolatsia, Platform for Cultural Initiatives, that was based in uh, Donetsk, in, uh, in the site of a former insulation factory, which gave the name to the, to the Cultural Center. And uh, since the beginning of its, uh, uh, of its uh, activities, uh, the foundation uh, was uh, very active, inviting uh, different internationally recognized artists such as Daniel Buren, Leandro Ehrlich, uh, Pascal Martin Tayu to make uh, site-specific installations on its territory, on the territory of the factory, that would uh, stay in the collection of, uh, of, of this cultural center. And uh, also they focused on work with uh, local contemporary artists. Uh, the works that you can see here, they were created in 2012 and already in 2014 the territory of uh, Izolatsia was seized by the pro-Russian uh, group of uh, the so-called unrecognized uh, Donetsk Popular Republic and uh, unfortunately uh, the administration of, uh, of, uh, of this art center needed to uh, moved to Kiev, losing part of its archive, losing uh, part of its uh, technical equipment, and all these works created by the international artists. Uh, here we can see, for example, that uh, uh, the work uh, Make Up Peace by Pascal Martin Tayu was uh, exploded in an act of pure vandalism uh, by the representatives of this uh, military group and uh, other installations, because they were metallic ones, they were cut for scrap metal uh, and reportedly they were just sold for, 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 for the price of metal. And uh, now uh, the, this um, Italia Foundation continues its functioning in Kiev. And they dedicated a lot of their attention to support of uh, artists who experienced uh, displacement due to the uh, ongoing military events. Simply Went Away, video installation of Ola Mikhailuk, tells stories of displaced mothers who had to flee their home because of the shellings in summer 2014. When the conflict in eastern Ukraine began to escalate, the artist Mikhailuk decided to go there in order to see uh, with her own eyes uh, the situation and to help. Uh, being in Alchevsk, one of the cities in eastern Ukraine, uh, when railroad had exploded in this day and nobody could leave, uh, she met a lot of young mothers who this day had to walk 40 kilometers in order to flee from the shellings. The artist decided to leave uh, this experience with her own body uh, walking also 40 kilometers. And then she recorded stories of the displacement of the women and invited them to uh, take part in the installation where their stories were heard and their words were seen. In this way, the installation not only tells us 
the stories of displacement and gives us context of the war, but also um, serves as a therapeutic way uh, in order to reflect and express the tragedy. And now we are moving to the section which is called War. In this section we represent uh, how uh, Ukrainian artists reflected on the conditions of uh, everyday living in uh, the context of violence and uh, how they reconceptualized or critically reconsidered uh, the legacies of this experience uh, for the major part of the population of Eastern Ukraine of resistance in the border with the uh, conflict. Uh, this project focuses on the idea that each society procreates its own monsters, especially in the context of a military conflict or political tensions. Uh, it emphasizes how collective unconscious um, in the context of war influenced by mass media propaganda creates its ideological other which becomes unknown, potentially dangerous and uh, loses its human characteristics. The images of the piece are inspired by the European uh, illuminated manuscripts and bestiaries and reinterpreted in the large-scale uh, digital graphics. The line of monsters are inspired by mm, dance of macabre, uh, its um, uh, medieval representation of the universality of death. The artist uh, Svetlana Bedareva uh, criticizes and makes us think of the societies not only in the context of uh, Ukrainian war, but also uh, in the context of a Syrian crisis or the drug-related uh, violence in Mexico, emphasizing uh, the universality of grotesqueness of any military conflict. Victories of the Defeated is a photographic project by Evgenia Belarusias. This project consists of more than 150 photographs taken by the artist uh, in the eastern border of Ukraine. In small minor towns, where people live all their life and they work in coal mining industry. Now these towns uh, persist under threat of uh, Russian military aggression. Some of them they were occupied by the Russian forces, but eventually they were returned to the territory of Ukraine. And uh, they, the objective of the artist was to see the everyday living of these people. Uh, what, what is the, the world around them? How do they, how do they think? What uh, what are their routine activities, and what are their perspectives on the social and political conditions they are living in? So uh, Belarusians uh, uh, worked uh, with, uh, in particular, with women who work in uh, mines in these uh, towns of Don Donbas, and uh, in the series of eight photographs that we present here. She depicted their most intimate moments, uh, most uh, routine daily activities, which they allowed to her to document. And this created a very powerful uh, statement about the social context this industrial region provides for its inhabitants. And uh, with the closeness of war, with the shadow of war that is uh, hanging over this region, uh, this uh, social context becomes even more complex and more difficult. Belarus has also wrote a book which is called uh, Fortunate Fallings, where she included the stories of this woman, and uh, she attempted to present them from uh, the, first, uh, the first person and uh, to de de depict precisely the 
to, 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 to allow us to approach closer to the way of thinking and the way of living of uh, people in, in the industrial parts of Donetsk region. Videos in the East and Me and Mariupol by Pyotr Armenovsky. These short documentaries represent the author's search for his hometown, Donetsk, from which he had to flee in the summer of 2014. It's one of the largest industrial centers of eastern Ukraine, uh, which is located in the epicenter of war from the beginning. Um, Armenovsky films in Kramatorsk and Mariupol, cities are, that are emblematic to the industrial um, eastern Ukraine and not difficult to compare with Donetsk. The impossibility of return and temporary loss of the child, childhood hometown uh, gives to um, urban landscapes a um, nostalgic atmosphere. Arthur um, gives voices to local people. He wants to hear their stories and opinions, giving us a an unique and intimate approach to the citizens of eastern Ukraine who experienced um, share the experience of life in a war zone. В детстве я ходил в купленных моряков. В этом здании мы соревновались в вязании морских узлов и семафоре. Здесь стартовала парусная регата. Мариуполь всю жизнь был сучьим углом, потому что сюда съезжался весь сброд со всего Советского Союза. Два района было заказских общежитий. И был порт. Ну, конечно, как сказать, континент разный. Моряки — это один континент, которые моря хотели. А знаете, это были люди, которые подневольные, которые гнали всех подряд сюда. Уже четвертый год рядом с Мариуполем Идет война, как и в моем родном Донецке, где я не был с тех самых пор. Сталинин, допустим, да? Так мы на работу, ну я еще и пацаном был туда, а люди шли на работу с песней и с работы с песней. Как не туго жили, ну в спину никто нож не утыкал. Ночь полночь, идешь, никто не трогал. А сейчас попробуй, пройди. За пять копеек зарежут и голову отрежут. Стреляют. Я говорю, вот такие дети уже надо называть дети войны. Я сам дети войны. Через 70 лет опять уже дед войны получается. Так? Вот так и живем. Ты записываешь меня? Посадишь. Простите? Посадишь потом. Посажу куда? Кто? Ну, Куталашку. Нет, конечно. За правду. А, тут за правду сажают? А я не знаю, может быть и сажают. Вот это как есть, да? Сплюды за свои гроши, кисточки, валики, краски купляют, свеча тратят. Чтобы место ведь жило, чтобы красиво. Оно очень потребно, особенно в такой сложный час. Кто сейчас это рисует? Это символ Украины, мы живем на Украине. Дядечка, не надо меня снимать. Мы живем на Я говорю, не надо меня снимать. Куда вы по краске Горюк. наступаете? Горюк, что ли? Да, какие да. там, говорю, пошли. Так мне интересно, Ваша почему? Вас стоять и спрашивать. А да? что, почему? почему? Интересоваться не спрашивать. Спрашиваешь по-другому. Я не умничаю. А ты житель города? Да. Житель города. In the exhibition, we present the documentation of the installation by Roman Mikhailov, which is called Shadows. This installation was initially presented at the Verkhovna Rada, the Parliament of Ukraine, and at the Sachi Gallery, among other places, in 2014. In our case, we present the photograph of uh, the installation that consisted of uh, boats made of burnt wood. And uh, this installation was dedicated to the 
loss of uh, Ukrainian naval fleet with the annexation of Crimea by Russian Federation. The artist addresses this uh, boats as uh, some kind of symbol of not only the material loss of, uh, of Ukrainian fleet or material loss of uh, Ukrainian territory of Crimea, but uh, as uh, some kind of more general comment on, on the loss of hopes, uh, on uh, all the questions related to the nostalgia about the past and uh, the shadows of this past that appear in our lives daily. Uh, this uh, installation pro provides kind of uh, provides an important comment on the situation that uh, many people uh, in Ukraine uh, feel until until today. Here we present two projects by artists Yuri Koval and Anton Paperniak that are called uh, Equilibrium and Globalization. In this project. Uh, the artist uh, uh, reinterpret the idea of uh, conflict, linking it to historical legacies and at the same time linking it to the contemporary global situation. Both projects appear as ironical as uh, they bring uh, the situation to absurdity. They, uh, for example, the project of uh, Koval uh, focuses on the cultural memory of the Second World War and uh, the legacy of violence uh, taken from, from this visual uh, heritage of the Second World War, while the project of Popernyak uh, responds to the idea of uh, existing in a global village, existing in some kind of network that uh, manages our intentions and manages uh, the international relations and at the same time different societal processes inside the countries. So uh, we decided to present these projects together in order to uh, merge uh, these two approaches into one single perspective. In the section spaces, we are talking about spaces which disappeared or appeared or were filled with new meanings in the Ukraine in the last six years, uh, which includes changes in the perception of post-Soviet heritage also transformation of Donbass and Crimea into contested territories. The artists in this section uh, speak about physical and imaginary boundaries and also propose visual uh, exploration of memory in oblivion. The project Behind the Fence by Ukrainian sculptor Zhanna Kadyrova critically interpreted and uh, reflected on the event of illegal annexation of Crimea by Russian Federation in February-March 2014. In order to represent the division of space, the artist uh, presented uh, the installations on the seashore of Azov Sea, which is another small sea of Ukraine, and she used elements of old Soviet fences and uh, Soviet playgrounds to create this particular distribution of space, where, where the viewer could uh, feel himself being behind the fence or beyond the fence. Kadyrova represented her reply to this uh, emergence of uh, invisible walls between Crimea and uh, continental Ukraine, and also she presented it as a reflection on the legacy of the Soviet past in this division of territory. When the conflicts that they persist since the times of Soviet Union and uh, also that they developed in the post-Soviet times affect precisely this uh, geographical division. I also think that uh, Kadyrova used uh, parts of children's playgrounds with the intention to uh, comment on, on, on this idea that these territorial divisions are just children games, children ge ge geopolitical games from the side of uh, Russia as the initiator of this process. Regular Places, Mykola Rydny. In this video, which was a part of a main project in Venice Biennale 2015, we observed five sites uh, in the center of Kharkiv. It's a large city located at the front line of a war in the eastern part of Ukraine. Despite the normality emphasized by images, the video gives pretty violent impression because of the 
audio loops with screamings and threats uh, superimposed in video and recorded by the author a few months before in the same city. While looking at the streets of Kharkiv uh, in the summer 2014, it is difficult to imagine the violence that escalated here a few months before. There were clashes between Maidan and anti-Maidan activists where citizens participated in mass public humiliations. Um, dramatic and conscious dissonance between audio and video in this work uh, represents a forced confrontation between recent and uh, dramatic memory and present and apparent oblivion. The project on the Republic's monuments by photographer Evgen Nikiforov emerged in 2015 as a response to uh, the set of decommunization laws accepted by Ukrainian parliament. This uh, set of laws presupposed, among others, that uh, any Soviet symbols uh, to be found in public monuments or in murals, for example, needed to be erased or camouflaged in any way. Uh, such Soviet symbols as uh, state symbols of Soviet Union, Soviet leaders, uh, uh, particular elements of Soviet ideology such as the Red Army needed to be uh, hidden from the public view. This law provoked uh, big a uh, wave of uh, confrontation and uh, discussions uh, from uh, not only the side of artists and cultural workers but also general public because uh, it provoked a big doubt whether uh, the possibility of demolishing of uh, Soviet monuments is actually a consideration of the current uh, country's policies and uh, the perception of the past or it is just a vandalism against uh, national heritage. Between 2015 and 2018, Nikiforov traveled across Ukraine and he documented the process of impl implementation of these decommunization laws. He documented how some of the monuments were demolished, others were painted with uh, colors of uh, Ukrainian flag, which helped to save them also from, from, from demolishing. And uh, he also documented how many of the monuments that were not actually uh, connected to the demands of the law, uh, fell victims of, uh, of this intention of decommunization. Even those monuments that they didn't carry this particular symbolism. Uh, the, pro the photographic project of uh, Nikiforov contains more than 100 photographs. From them we present eight in this exhibition. And uh, is this, this documentation calls us to rethink the questions of cultural legacy, the questions of uh, uh, the rights of uh, the next generation to rethink and to rewrite history, as well as uh, to speak about uh, current conditions of uh, uh, cultural memory in contemporary Ukraine. We would like to thank you very much for taking this virtual tour with us. And we hope you enjoyed the exhibition at the front line, Ukrainian Art 2013-2019. If you have any comments or questions, please get in touch with us. Thank you.